This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Very first question is, what's the appropriate amount of whipped topping to put on a pumpkin pie slice at Thanksgiving? Provide diagrams if possible. Put on however much you want, bro. All right, you do you. I can't eat pumpkin pie, so you eat some for me. Also, same thing with whipped cream, like I can't, can't eat that. Sydney asks, can we hang out again soon? Probably, you know, probably. Number one tip for starting a channel, I'm gonna say, I mean, it's, it, you, there is no, there is a number one, but it's, a, it's an incomplete answer. But number one is, you just need to start and you need to upload a video. Like, just upload a video. Don't worry about it if you don't have your profile photo, your header, or any of that stuff. Like, you gotta upload a video. You just gotta get something on the canvas. You know what I mean? So then you can iterate and improve from there. But just get something on. And then consistently do that. You're trying to make improvements. You know, just little improvements. Try not to focus too much on numbers right away. Uh, analytics, all that stuff. You just, there's just not enough data in the set at that point in order to be able to really take any actionable information from your analytics when you're just starting the channel. So just do you, get videos up there, and then make your own improvements, like do what you wanna do, and try to get better at doing what you wanna do, and then, yeah, just keep your head in the game for like a year. Do you batch record? No, I don't. I don't do that. Um, I do have like three videos that I'm sitting on that they all just can't be released yet. But no, I'm not a batch recorder. It just doesn't fit my style, my brand, or like who I am. I'm like, I really, I did daily vlogging for a whole year and I got I got like stuck in that mindset and it's really hard to break out of it for me. And also just not fun. Like batch recording isn't fun for me. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do me, you know what I'm saying? Are you full-time YouTube or have you been doing any consulting or videos for business? Would love to know the split of revenue from all of your work. Uh, I am full-time YouTube, but also I do consulting and also videos for business. Uh, split of revenue, Let's see if I have access to that like immediately from my bookkeeper is also, there we go, there we go, let's take a look, I think I got it. Yeah, split of revenue. So January 01 to October 21, 2021, so this is this past year up to October 21, brand deals were 47,000, client like videos were 20,000, there's some sort of other income there that's 2,000, I don't know what that is, but but I'm glad that I'm making it. Uh, sales are at 10,000, also don't know what that is, and then vlog income, Patreon, YouTube ads, et cetera, is at 3,900. So breakdown is that, and uh, yeah, I'd say primarily I am a full-time YouTuber. Um, but always looking to increase every other income stream, you know what I'm saying? If the pandemic or global travel restrictions were lifted tomorrow, where would you go first? Honestly, first thing that comes to mind, Sweden, Peter Lindgren, we'd be vlogging together, and just be like super rad. Nerf fights, you see Leela's vlogs? Like she's having a blast over there with Peter, it was rad. Favorite photo spot in PA? I guess I don't have a favorite. This one's great, look at that bridge. Uh, I'm sorry that I don't have uh, a favorite. You know what, you know what a good one to visit is? Um, waterfalls, Ricketts Glen is like, there's like, 11 or 17 or eight waterfalls there and they're all gorgeous, winter time, awesome. Check it out, Ricketts Glen. How to set up open camera like a pro? I don't know if open camera is a thing. I don't know how to set it up if it is like an app. Um, just cameras in general. I'm also not like a pro at setting up cameras. Jesse and I did a video on setting up the EOSR but he was mostly setting it up and I was just listening to him in my boxers. Did someone say, no that's not a question, that's a different Twitter reply. How do you know when you're done with an edit? I love this question. You're never done. You're absolutely never done. You just never will be done. Movies are never done. Films aren't done. They just don't get done. So what I like to do is get them to like 80 to 90% good or on a scale of 10, like get them to a 7 out of 10. I guess that would be 70%. <laughs> Get them close to done, and then and then press press upload. All right. The only other way to do it, like if you're doing like a, I don't know, a film, like if you're making a movie, then I think you get it to 80% done. You send it to like reviewer number one. They get it to like 82% done. They send it back to you, and you just try to iterate. But you know, you don't want to do that for too long because you can end up ruining something that was better at 80% than it is at quote unquote 92. You know what I'm saying? So get it to 80%, especially for YouTube, especially for client work. Get it to 80% 
and then press upload. Have you ever visited the UK or Poland? I've been in Northern Ireland, which I think is part of the UK. North Ireland, Northern Ireland is a part of the UK, yeah. Been in Northern Ireland. I think that is literally the only place I've been in the UK. I'm sorry, I should come and visit you, Trio Stories. Thanks for being rad and just putting out great. If you don't watch Trio Stories, I don't know what you're doing with your life. What should someone focus on in their first year of taking YouTube seriously? Just getting videos up there consistently, trying to make these small iterative improvements. Again, like you're just focusing on what you think are improvements. Don't worry so much about the analytics and the data because there's just not enough data to really make actionable changes. Yeah, having fun, making stuff that you like, like just finding your voice, getting in a groove, specifically Lucy May who asked this question she's already really great like she has a really great camera presence it took me a really long time to get there but I watched a couple of her videos and she's got a great current so I don't know just focus on iterative improvements and, and have a blast don't get too in your head about it you know what I'm saying all right no day I don't know what that is oh almost done with Twitter now we're moving on to Instagram man I can't scroll this thing here we go oh no there's a whole nother screenshot of Twitter Good, that's what I like to see. If you could go back and tell yourself one thing before you started YouTube, what would it be? I'm like a no regrets kind of person. Like I don't, I think I actually had a pretty, pretty clear head going into YouTube, like what it would be, what it could be what it would become, what I hoped it would, like it, it really did become what I hoped it would become, like this whole other business for me, which is awesome. I think something that the majority of people maybe don't, maybe need to be told would be, it's gonna take time, it's gonna take patience, and, and you just gotta keep, you gotta, it's exponential growth, all right? So like at the beginning, it doesn't feel like a lot, but then at some point, it's gonna pop off, it's gonna be rad, all right? So just keep hitting, hitting record, and hitting upload, and press and publish, it's kind of, Con, as Colin and Samir would say, keep pressing publish. All right, Twitter number two. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Colin says, thanks to Squarespace for this deadline. That's very true, Squarespace. Thank you for making, for giving me an opportunity to make this AMA. Real quick about Squarespace, it's the only place you need to go online in order to build a website, grow a brand, like everything like that that you need to do. That's where you go, squarespace.com slash Cody Warner if you want to use my link. Wait, I'm get, I'll get there at the end. Squarespace.com slash Cody Warner. You can do everything there. You buy your domain straight from Squarespace. You can host an online shop, sell stuff straight through Squarespace. You can build an email list, uh, marketing, landing pages, like whatever you want to and need to do. You can do right at squarespace.com slash Cody Warner. Go there, get 10% off your first purchase when you're ready to buy after a two week trial. Squarespace, thanks again for sponsoring. How's life, Cody? I hope you're still well. Stay awesome, pal. You know what? Thank you very much. Life is really good. You know, there's struggles and there's like hard stuff that kind of just like keeps coming. But I was just having a conversation today with one of my friends about like, you know, the hard stuff and the good stuff, like it's it's all part of the mix. And I'm just thankful for all of it and 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 trying not to judge each and every like hard thing that comes or each and every good thing that comes is like good or bad just trying to kind of like see them and be like all right this is a new experience and we're gonna we're gonna keep on moving you know so life is good and thank you for caring about me any tech or film gear that you hope santa places under the tree this year you know what i really want is the i think it's the tamron 100 to 500 or something like that some crazy range and i really just want like a really super long telephoto um santa is not gonna do it if it's gonna get done i'm gonna be the one who does it and so it's not gonna get done because i'm not gonna i'm not gonna do it amber all right don't worry about that what's your favorite blend of coffee if you have one i do not have a favorite blend i'm sorry literally my favorite food they're talking about craft macaroni and cheese i can't eat craft anymore because it's got elbow macaroni style I like elbow macaroni style the best. Uh, I don't know, is that the kind that I like? I don't know, I used to like it. How do you break out of a creative rut? Or alternatively, well, we got some uh, wind here. How do you break out of a creative rut? Or alternatively, how do you break out of so the someone has already done this quagmire? First off, quagmire is such a great word used in this context. Thank you for using that. Secondly, I think making stuff with friends is a really great way to break out of a creative rut just making something new, like just getting out of your hobby or your career, whatever it is that you're like doing creatively and going into something else. I think that's a good like 
way to freshen things up, make things fresh and fun and new again. And then like, if you can go so hard at that thing that you start to get like kind of bored at that and you start having all these other creative ideas and you can go back into whatever the thing that you were hoping to get creative again in is. Or if that doesn't happen, now you just have this new thing that you love doing. So, and taking a break, getting out and about in the town, and making stuff, you know, just like seeing new things, having people walking by you and looking at you funny, like just kind of get a little uncomfortable with it, you know, maybe, maybe that's a good idea. But the someone has already done this quagmire, someone has already done like everything, okay? So as much as possible, don't worry about it, whether someone's already done it, you've got your own unique take on whatever the thing is and like you doing it just by the very nature of it being you is gonna be slightly different or maybe majorly different from how they did it. So don't worry about that. Like, you know, iterate, make it your own and 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 still have fun doing it, you know? I don't I don't really worry about the like who cares if somebody already did it? It's it's fine. Just you do it. I'm not yelling. I'm not trying to yell at you. I'm just talking I'm just I'm just talking. At what point did you leave your day job and go in on your own media business? So my career trajectory was had the day job, like nine to five type thing, uh, for two and a half years after I graduated from college, and then two and a half years into it, went on this trip to Thailand, and I just had like an extreme amount of clarity while I was away because I was so focused. It's like flow state when you're in another country, like didn't have access to my phone, wasn't doing anything other than we're trying to assist these organizations that were in the fight against forced prostitution in Thailand. Just focus on that, focus on the people that I was there with and got this extreme amount of clarity, gotta leave your job, gotta go in and do your own thing. Came back, quit my job, started doing freelance video, freelance sales, and, and just trying to like, you know, make it on my own. Then a year after that, started the production company with Christian and Krista and so that is what that is what happened I don't really the question was at what point so that was the point if you're talking about more of like a existential like when did you know that it was time to leave I'm, I'm like one of those people who just likes to follow his gut and and like those feelings and not just like one feeling because feelings can be a little sporadic, a little willy-nilly, a little crazy welly, crazy daisy. Like if you just keep waking up day after day after day and you're having this feeling and maybe you're like, you're counseling with some mentors or people that you trust and you're, and you're still coming to the conclusion that like it's time to take a leap, then that's the time, you know? That's kind of, that's kind of my litmus test. What is the best and worst part of YouTube? The best part is just all the adventures and people that I've gotten to meet and things that I've gotten to do and just the fact that it's different every day, the fact that like even the job in and of itself, at least the way I do it is like shooting, editing, traveling, negotiating with brands, doing creative stuff over here for brands. It's not even on my channel. Like the fact that it's all over the place is the best part for me because I need this kind of like constant newness and uniqueness and change. So that's like really personally fulfilling for me. That's the best part. The worst part is there's not a lot of other people, at least in my, you know, super, there's nobody. There's nobody who's full-time YouTube that I like get to hang out with on a regular basis. And I would really just love someone to like sit next to, make videos with, and we'd be editing at the same time. And I'd be like, oh, did you respond to your emails? And they'd be like, no. And I'd be like, oh, we should really do that. That's not even a bad part. Like it, it's just like, it's just part of it, you know? But I, I'd say the worst part, quote unquote, is just that I'd love other people to do this with, like on a day-to-day -day basis. You might say like, why don't you just hire somebody to do that with? I just don't have that much money. It's funny, I just told you how much money I have actually, or made at least, you don't know how much I kept. I don't have the budget set aside to do that, but that, I mean, that is a future goal for sure, is just like hire somebody who can co-create with me. They build their own YouTube channel, I'm paying them, they're helping me, I'm helping them. That like, this just sounds amazing to me. The wind is blowing the wrong way for my hair. That's what's happening here. That's why you see me keep touching my hair. Like if the wind was blowing this way, I would stop touching it. All right, so don't, so like don't make fun of me about how much I touched it so far yet, okay? Tips for balancing life and family time with YouTube. How do you, how did you select your YouTube genre? Family time is the most important thing, all right? So just prioritize family time. Get family time on lock, like a daily practice maybe of like, what are you doing with your family? How are you getting like that love tank fulfilled like your own self and then your family and just like get that on lock 100% do that first then figure out how to fit YouTube in after that that's what I'm going with today how do you select your YouTube genre 
Uh, there's no right or wrong answer. I think, you know, you can, you can really just pick something and do it. Like, cause everything is gonna have its pluses and minuses. If you pick something you really love, like a niche that like super niche down, you really love it. That's great. Especially in the beginning, you're gonna like love making those videos cause you're just into the subject. But at some point it might start to become more of like a, ah, I just like monetized my hobby so much that I don't even love my hobby anymore. That can happen. So that, you know, that's a bit of a bummer. On the flip side, if you pick something that you're not in love with, then you're not going to be like as intrinsically motivated to make those videos in the first place, but you're never going to run into the whole thing where like you feel like you ruined, you, you feel like you, you started to ruin something that you used to love. You know, so really just pick something and just make videos and have fun. How is your mental health? Any new healthy habits that you've added to your daily routine? Nothing new. I still work out four times a week, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. And that is like, that was and continues to be the most kind of like chemically stabilizing thing that I've done for, for my life. And I love that. And I joke about like Wednesdays are just like, a wash because I don't work out on Wednesdays. I'm just like, well, what am I even supposed to do? I don't even feel good. I don't even feel good right now. I have been trying to completely stay away from all of the foods that I'm sensitive to, which is also very helpful. It's eggs and, and dairy products, basically. Um, also almonds, weirdly. No, you're not allergic, just like sensitive, I guess. I don't know. And so I think that that probably helps. Yeah, those are like really the only daily-ish habits that I do uh, that are healthy. And, and, and they're not really new, I'm sorry, but, uh, but they are very important, so, so do them. Do you have any regrets pursuing YouTube full-time? I'm a no regrets type person, all right? So, so the answer's gonna be no. I regret, I regret choosing a super windy location. I don't, I don't even, because it's, it's way more fun and, and it's prettier, you know? And it, like it's cold and chilly and it's keeping me on my toes. So I don't, but I am gonna probably regret it when I get in the edit and, and it's windy and that's gonna bug me, you know? But no, I don't regret pursuing YouTube full-time. Any kind of pursuit that you do in your life that you care about is gonna have its ups and downs and it's gonna feel like a roller coaster, at least for me. Everything I've ever done has felt like a roller coaster. I know that like this has a lot of very fulfilling and like good personal things for me, so I'm happy with those. And like the stuff that is hard and 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 the stuff that is hard and uncomfortable about it is just like, yeah, that's stuff that's hard and uncomfortable. It's gonna happen anytime. So that's my, that's my stance. Come on with the wind. What activities do you do, you do to keep your head high and push through? Uh, yeah, working out is great for that for me. Being with friends, spending time with people that I love, like getting in deep, engaging conversations with people that I love, working out. Just, just keeping your, like, like choosing to be like, even though this isn't what I wanted, to be happening, I'm gonna continue moving forward. Like keeping that somehow front and center, I think is super crucial, all right? So whether you have to like write that somewhere or whether you have to like write it 50 times in a journal every single day or tape it to your forehead or your mirror or your computer monitor, like this is hard and I am doing it is like the short version of it. But regardless of how hard this gets, I'm gonna keep on going, is like something mentally that I focus on to try to get through hard times. We're on Instagram, let's go. Instagram, diving in. My dad asked, embracing your pogo stick mindset, has it been a more recent freeing understanding? This is a TikTok that I made about people with ADHD being pogo sticks, trying to fit into a world made for bikes. Yes and no, you know? I think that in a lot of ways, it is extremely freeing. Not like more recent, it really became very freeing in 2018 when I started to really embrace like, I have ADHD, I'm different than other people and that's okay and I'm just gonna kind of lean into this. Um, but I, I mean, I would say there are like still a lot of times, week in and week out, that I'm like, Ah, if I could just be normal, if I could just kind of like be a routine based person, that would make all of this so much easier. Like, why can't I just do that? I think the self-awareness is, is definitely helpful because I can always say like, Cody, remember you're different. And I can also always lean on like, you're different and there's stuff about that, there's stuff about people like you that's like very great that like people who aren't like you can't do and, and you have a lot to bring to the table and just because you're not good at remembering to do stuff on time or the day in and day out grind of like the same thing day in and day out just because you're not good at that that doesn't mean that like you're not contributing somehow so it is good to have that self-awareness but it doesn't necessarily make it easier it just is like a way to look at the hard stuff and try to frame it in, in a more positive light. 
What tips would you and Amber give to new parents? I don't have Amber here with me, unfortunately, but have fun, soak it up. Just like, really, if you have to close yourself off from the rest of the world, just to like get your family, you know, in the right spot and until you feel solid, like that's totally fine. Everybody, I think, understands that, that you're like figuring stuff out. Prioritize your own mental health, prioritize your partner's mental health, and you know, take care of the, take care of the kiddo, obviously but don't you know it's really hard it's just really hard to like make that big of an adjustment in your life so don't don't judge yourself too harshly like it's it's going to be hard and you're doing your best and you're going to get through it it's going to get easier in the future it's like you're it's going to feel normal at some point at some point you're not even going to remember what it was like to not have a kid and that's going to be crazy just keep going you know really that's the just keep going and every new obstacle and challenge that comes with parenting just face it head on Figure it out. Communicate with your partner about it, and and get it. Just get it done. You know, just have, just you're just doing it. You're crushing it. Similar question. What are the ways you keep the romance having different interests? Ah, uh, how do we keep the romance? We just try to talk a lot. And we're just trying to talk to each other a lot about our feelings and about our lives and about you know workouts. Amber works out too, so we do we do actually have a lot of interests that are very similar. Um, so that's not a fair question for me because like that is helpful to be able to talk about stuff that we both are interested in. I think you can you know with the kids we have an amazing support system. So this is also not fair, but like we can send them to my parents, we can send them to Amber's parents, we can go out on date nights and go on trips and like do fun stuff together. So we have like a support system that is that is extremely fantastic but I mean I think just remembering to 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 figuring out how to prioritize romance is one of the most crucial parts like it's gonna look different for every person but figuring out how to prioritize it and like keep it front and center and send each other texts where you say you love each other and and like prioritize it do stuff with friends go out on date nights with friends like Figure out ways to prioritize your relationship and your romance that both of you enjoy. How to find who you are, your voice, purpose, mission, values, and translate it into a personal brand. Wow, that is a lot. That is a lot. The way to find it is to definitely start looking for it, start pursuing it, start trying to like intellectually figure it out and whether you're getting that down on paper or getting it down in video form, if you're trying to build a personal brand through it, like understand that that is adding another layer of complexity because like finding your purpose in life is one thing. Finding your purpose in life while trying to document it and build a personal brand out of it, which generally when people talk about building personal brands, like they're talking about monetization and like trying to turn it into something that is like public and maximizable. So to do those two things together is very hard. So so maybe, maybe first like split it off, like find your purpose, find your values and your mission. And then once you've found them, then consider documenting it and turning it into a personal brand. But definitely prioritize the purpose and the mission and the values first. That's the most important part. I do agree that doing that, whoa, doing that through vlogging or through like documenting, it can be helpful. Uh, but it also just adds, a, it definitely adds a layer of complexity because like you need room to make mistakes and learn and grow and change your mind and stuff. And that's not always super easy to do publicly on the internet, you know? This has been one 32 minute take currently. Just waiting for these sirens. Crunchy or smooth peanut butter? I'm gonna go smooth. You know, I like both, but smooth is what we buy all the time. What have you been doing since not doing daily vlogs? What have, what have you been up to since not doing daily vlogs? You know, this is like this is like a hard question for me because like basically it's um it's getting at like a one of my deepest like wounds and like insecurity and concerns which is that like if I'm not showcasing what I'm doing then that means I'm not actually doing anything. So like that's a thing that so I just know that like I'm processing that as I'm trying to answer this question basically bro so like there's that but like it's also hard because like I do feel like I've been sharing what I've been doing but like you know I know that you didn't mean any of this like you didn't mean you were just like yo bro what are you doing and I'm like taking it into this like deep existential like thing but like and it's not supposed to be that so, um but like mostly just been making videos for like for myself and other people TikToks and things and and some youtube videos um but and like just trying to have fun go on adventures and stuff but but like there is this sense of like you like there is this sense that maybe you're saying like have you like you haven't been doing enough again i don't know i don't think that that is what you've been what what you were saying there bro um 
but like I just want you to know like what I'm processing through with the not daily vlogging thing because this is you know it is that is something that you know like is like has been like is like a existential thing question for me so you know long question but yeah just making vids having fun trying to you know trying to do it trying to do good things started a business uh it didn't launch it yet so don't you know you don't have you you wouldn't have known about it so no problem thoughts on youtube shorts i like them i mean i guess i don't really watch them i watch tiktok you know for me like it's easier to compartmentalize tiktok is like shorts and then youtube is like long form i get that they had to get into it because like they're like we're losing people to tiktok we got to do the same things i get it i totally get it but for me like i don't really watch reels or or shorts i just watch tiktok and then like uh that's how i do it so i'm cool with them i think there's a good way to like grow a, an online presence with them but uh, I don't I don't really make them or, or, or watch them I'm getting tired I should take a I should take a breather okay how can you tell if it's time to push even harder or to give up completely YouTube business etc that is a great question how can you tell you got to follow your gut you got to follow your gut and like maybe again not in every single moment perpetually day in and day out feeling like it's time to stop then it probably is time to stop or at least take a step back if it, like it's a fleeting feeling of like oh i gotta stop i hate this then it might be time to like momentarily take a step back but but maybe not you know for like a longer break or something feelings can be fleeting but they also can be really good guides of like what you should be doing long term as long as like if you're feeling them long term but yeah i mean if you can focus on the stuff that you love about the business or about the channel or about whatever it is that you're doing that you're considering pulling away from completely or just going like putting your nose down and going harder if you can focus on the stuff that you love and you can still see the purpose and you can still understand like yeah this is why i'm doing this this is important then i don't think it's ever you know th then i think you probably still have some grind left in you to, to be able to go after it but if you lose that grind and you lose that motivation for a long enough time then you shouldn't judge yourself or like you shouldn't feel bad at all about taking a step back and, and recalibrating and pursuing your other interests and your relationships and stuff like that's all great stuff that you know numerous people have done and have benefited from so don't feel bad about that just you're still going to keep moving forward but maybe you're just doing it in some other way what's your favorite thing about life right now huh favorite thing about life it's my favorite thing about favorites are always hard for me because I, I'm just like a lover like I just love stuff like right now I really love that all the trees are different colors that's pretty favorite you know I'm hyped for Thanksgiving coming up I hope to be able to see my family and and spend time together hopefully how's it going yeah 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 no way dude yeah yeah sick I love it yeah thank you very much thanks for saying hey yeah I love every night just getting to spend time with Amber we've been we've been playing Beat Saber that's been super fun I have a lot of favorite like I I really love my life I love the Sun hitting my face right now I love breathing I love working out I love that like I have friends who like to work out with me that's seriously that is like whoo I just I love that so those are those are some of my favorites advice so you don't have to depend on AdSense and YouTube diversify income streams outside of YouTube even but also brand deals like inside YouTube patreon brand deals um, uh, online courses lots if you can sell them merch if you can sell it all the different stuff but you know then just like making videos for clients doing a whole nother job that's not like selling real estate just diversify all of the things don't rely on any one thing for, for income. Audrey Ember just asked, how are you? Which again, I'm doing well and I thank you. You know, there's good and there's bad. I already answered it in full, but thank you. What are your 10 year goals? I wanna keep making videos. I wanna be bigger and better. I don't wanna be making them with other people. And I wanna be around people in like creative spaces that is just like overflowingly creative. And we're just like overflowing creative motivation out into the world for 10 years. In 10 years, that's what I want to be happening. What kind of socks are you wearing? Describe slowly. Um, well, I do love my socks. They are darn tough socks out of Vermont. They're made of merino wool, which is like really good at not holding bacteria, I guess. So you can wear them. I don't do this, but like if you were hiking, you could wear them for days on end and they basically like stay pretty fresh. Uh, they're this tall, you know, so they're kind of like a little bit above the ankle socks. I love them. They're gray back here and then they're like dark, but like black-ish over here. And they're fantastic and I really love them. These are my socks. These are the only socks I wear as well. I just have eight pairs of these socks. So I just swap them out every, every single day. Cause I, I'm a really big fan of like not having to choose things. 
especially when it comes to just like trivial little things, I just don't feel like it. I like to just like pick up my shirt and pick up my pants and pick up my shoes and put on my shoes and my socks and then, and then I don't have to think about it. It just makes it easier. All right, moving on. I have an old Canon 60D. Do you think it's possible to do something good with it? 100%. 100% it is, let me tell you why. Regardless of your kit, your gear, whatever you've got, you're always going to be thinking about, if I only had this, if I just, like, if this thing was just a little bit better in low light, then I would be able to make good stuff. Or like, if I just had that Tamron 100 to 500, then I would be able to, you're always going to want better stuff and think that the better stuff is the key to you making <laughs> All right, thank you very much. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just, yeah, I just saw him. Thank you. Get out. Bright orange. Look at that. This is just, this is just a fantastic shirt. It's a small. That is gonna be tight on me, but I'm gonna wear it. You're always gonna want better stuff, and you're always gonna need better stuff. Like, yeah, some of that is true, but it's. A, Filmmaking, making videos is all about making do with what you've got, making the best possible thing you can with what you've got. If you're able to do that with a not so solid piece of gear, not saying that the 60D isn't, it's a great camera. I used to have the 60 and I've shot on the 60D a couple times. Like that's how I started my video production company. So like I was making money, making client videos using that camera. Um, it's a great camera, but figure out how to use it to make the best stuff you can and it's that skill that is gonna serve you very well for the rest of your filmmaking career. What's your favorite type of vlog to make, Adrian S. Um, favorite one is like, when I go somewhere, I meet up with somebody and we go on an adventure, similar to when I came out to you and we went on that hike and then in the sunrise, like that was awesome. That is literally my favorite type of vlog to make. The excitement of meeting somebody and then going on a fun adventure together. Ah, love that, love it. Any advice for creating BTS videos? Um, I think of them like vlogs. I'm like, I'm like, okay, behind the scenes, like, what's what's the start? What's the hook here? What's the action? What's the adventure that's going on the whole time we're doing the shoot? And then what's the payoff? Like showing the actual what you created with that behind the scenes video, and then what they were making, like that you were filming the behind the scenes of. That's how I think about them. But document what's happening the whole way through, and then finding that story, that hook, that adventure, that payoff in that footage that you captured. I got tired. I got to go edit this video. There's more questions. Thank you all so much for asking these questions. Maybe I'll have to do a follow up and answer these, but I want to give them like my fullest and I've been recording for 46 minutes and like I'm just, I'm done. I just got done. Check out Squarespace if you need a website. See you in the next one.